With so many good comics out there, don't feel bad if these ones flew under your radar on their way to the big screen. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you didn't know were based on comic books. Think you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Click here to take the new MCU trivia quiz on WatchMojo.com. It's pretty hard, but get it right and you could win a free download of our ebook, Watch Mojo's 50 Most Influential Comics of the 80s. To play, click on the link in the description. For this list, we'll be looking at studio films that were based off not so well known comic books or graphic novels. A Tommy Gun! <laughs> Number 10 Mystery Man. Yes, this one should stick! <laughs> This late 90 comedy sees a group of superheroes, all with some pretty peculiar powers, banding together to fight the forces of evil. Spoofing on the tropes of comic book superheroes, as well as exploiting some logical conundrums is what it did best, just like in the comics. The film was inspired by the Flaming Carrot comics, which had its main run in the early and mid 80s. A parody of superheroes, Flaming Carrot is in the comics the founding member of the Mystery Men, although he does not appear in the film. Dig, man! Get dig, man! That's your name! Kill you later! Super losers! Number 9, Red. Damn satellites. Poop to that. Created by Warren Ellis and Cully Hamner, and published by imprints of DC Comics between 2003 and 2004, Red the Comic has a fairly straightforward, if dark, storyline. Between the three book miniseries, the reader follows Paul Moses as he is abruptly and unadvisedly brought out of retirement after a botched assassination attempt from his old employer, the CIA, when their new director of central intelligence overreacts. Revenge and rampage ensues. The film version incorporated not only humor, but extended the plot by adding several characters. This made for a very different story, but we also got to see Helen Mirren kicking some serious ass. Always a delight. Explosives? Just pass the RPGs. I love you, man. Number 8, Snowpiercer. Released in 2013, this English-language South Korean Czech production has many similarities to the material it is based on. In it, a huge, ever-moving train houses the last of humanity during a terrible ice age. Aboard the train, class divides push the impoverished people at the back of the train to revolt. The original French graphic novel was published all the way back in 1982 with the title Le Transperce Neige, and then later redubbed The Escape. Number 7, Blue is the Warmest Color. Is que l'enfance c'est ça, hein? c'est l'âge où vous en sortez, j'espère. C'est l'âge où on peut pas, on n'est pas encore assez grand, on n'est pas encore assez mûr, on n'est pas encore assez fort. In this French coming of age story about sexual identity and finding your true self, the viewer follows Adele from her teen years to adulthood and her ever evolving relationship with Emma, a young woman with vivid blue hair. The critically acclaimed film was based off the French graphic novel of the same name, Le Bleu est une couleur chaude, but which was originally marketed as Blue Angel. Even with a name change, Adele is Clementine in the graphic novel. The film and the comic follow close to the same plot for the majority of the story, but it is the ending which marks the sharpest difference. Genial. <laughs> Number 6, Time Cop. There are no new messages. While a financial success at the time of release, this Jean-Claude Van Damme outing has been largely forgotten despite its awesome name. Sharing virtually nothing in common with the three-part comic except for the protagonist's name, the film sees Max Walker and his time-traveling police unit attempt to catch criminals and alter timelines. In the comic's Time Cop, A Man Out of Time, Walker stops a time-traveling diamond thief from looting a South African mine in the 1930s, but must go back when a robot bodyguard gets left behind and starts messing up the timeline. Um, can we get that film? <laughs> Number five, a history of violence. Let's show this asshole we mean business. What? Her. Yes, her. <laughs> Do her! Starring Viggo Mortensen and directed by David Cronenberg, the 2005 film, which altered a few details, is for the most part a faithful adaptation of the 1997 graphic novel of the same name. After defending his livelihood in an armed robbery, Tom Stahl, last name McKenna in the comic, gained some unwanted media attention, and with it the eye of some dangerous mobsters. In 2006, the graphic novel was nominated for an Angelem International Comics Festival Prize for Scenario, and the film was lauded with numerous awards and nominations. You see how cozy it can be when you decide to play nice? Number 4, Annie. Annie. 
Even if you haven't seen the film, or any of the earlier iterations, you are probably familiar with one of the Broadway songs, or at least passingly recognize the Little Redhead Orphan. All were inspired by the comic strip Little Orphan Annie, itself inspired by an 1885 poem, and which ran in syndication from 1924 to 2010. The film was based on the first several strips, in which the main players, Annie, her dog Sandy, all of her daddy Warbucks, and others are introduced. The sun'll come out tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Number three, The Addams Family. Don't tease. They're creepy, kooky, mysterious, and spooky, and were first brought to light by Charles Adams in the pages of The New Yorker. The inspiration for the off-kilter family came after Adams met with famed sci-fi and horror writer Ray Bradbury in 1946. The one-panel cartoons and the memorably macabre household were first brought to the small screen in 1964. Animated ventures followed, and then in the early 90s they received their big screen live-action debut. Followed two years later by Adams Family Values, Gomez, Morticia, Wednesday, Pugsley, and the rest became household names. <laughs> Number two, Men in Black. Okay, look, check it out, man. When do I get my own flashy little memory messer upper thing? When you grow up. While many things in the sci fi comedy remain the same agents and their names, the relinquishing of identities, etc. the film was loosely based on the 1990 comics by Lowell Cunningham and Sandy Carruthers. In the movie, the MIB are concerned only with the presence and regulation of alien life forms on Earth. But in the comics, their purview covers not just aliens, but a full assortment of paranormal activities and creatures. The comics are also darker, as the MIB will kill a witness if necessary. So, the good guys don't always dress in black. See, what I can't understand is why you gotta come down here bringing all this ruckus. Number one, the mask. <laughs> the idea of the mask started back in 1982, but it wasn't until 1989 that the ugly green mischief maker finally made it to the pages. While the name of the first owner of the mask, Stanley Ipkiss, and the fact that he comes to be in possession of the magical mask is the same, much was changed or added to create the plot of the film. In the comic, for example, the unworn mask is jade and is purchased. In the film, it's made of wood and was found in a river. The comic is darker for sure, with Ipkiss shot and killed, and the mask more of a possessing spirit than an alter ego. Thank you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.